the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. The mausoleum, the tomb of Mausolos, the king of Caria, was colossal in size and was sumptuously decorated with many statues. It was one of the world's most splendid tombs and became so famous that the word mausoleum is now used to describe all large tombs. In the 4th century before Christ, the kingdom of Caria in Asia Minor, modern Turkey, was part of the Persian Empire. Mausolos ruled Caria for the Persians from 377 to 353 before Christ. As he became more powerful and independent, he decided to create a magnificent new center for his kingdom. He moved his capital from Mylasa, a city in the hills, to Halicarnassus, which lay by the sea. Today the city is called Bodru. Mausolos turned Halicarnassus into a gleaming city with many grand buildings, but the most memorable of them all was his own tomb, which he began to build during his lifetime. Work was continued after his death by his wife Artemisia who, in accordance with local custom, was also Mausolos's sister. Artemisia ruled Caria after Mausolos's death, but two years later she also died. The tomb was finished after her death, probably around 350 before Christ. The delight of its age. The tomb became known for its great architectural beauty and its sculptural decoration. Pliny the Elder and the ancient architect and engineer, Vitruvius tell us that the greatest sculptors of the time worked on it, including Bryuxus, Leocares, Timotheus, and Scopas. It was said that each one of them designed the decoration of one side of the tomb. It is possible that a local man called Satira supervised the whole of this vast building project. Groups of sculptures lined the base of the tomb and single statues stood between the columns on the colonnade. On the top was the tomb's crowning glory, a colossal statue of a four-horse chariot. Giant statues of Mausolos and his wife may have stood inside the chariot or lower down on the tomb. There were also huge statues of lions and of people who may have been members of Mausolos's court. The statues were painted with bright colors and fragments of the paint still survive on their remains. Elaborate carved panels, called reliefs, also decorated the mausoleum. They showed chariot races and fierce battles between Greeks and Amazons, Lapiths, and Centaurs. A spectacular tomb. Mausolos's tomb was built in the heart of the city, high on the hill overlooking the harbor. It was a combination of different styles Greek, local Carian, and some Egyptian. In the first century Anno Domini Pliny the Elder visited the tomb and described how it looked. The tomb was made up of three main parts, he said. Its massive rectangular base, the podium, was about 36.5 meters by 30.4 meters. The podium supported a colonnade or row of 36 columns in a style known as Ionic which was used in much Greek architecture. You can recognize Ionic columns by the scroll decoration at the top. Above this was a pyramid of 24 marble steps. Underground, inside the tomb, was a burial chamber with a coffin of white alabaster and gold. The entire tomb stood a massive 42.5 meters high. A monument destroyed. The mausoleum stood for many centuries, but then, in the 13th century, it was badly shaken by an earthquake. More trouble was in store. The Knights of St. John of Malta arrived in Halicarnassus and built the castle of St. Peter in the town in 1402. When they strengthened the castle in 1494 they used some of the stone from the tomb and over the following years they took more. White marble from the tomb was ground up to make the mortar used to cement together the stones of the castle. Even the tomb's burial chamber was plundered. The knights also took some of the tomb's beautiful reliefs and built them into the castle walls for decoration. By 1522, little of Mausolos's magnificent tomb remained and all that is left today are the foundations and some broken columns. But in 1846 some of the decorative reliefs from the castle were removed and sent to the British Museum. Finding extraordinary remains. In 1856 the Englishman Charles Newton began excavating the site. At first he found little. Then in a field he discovered steps, the mausoleum's foundation wall, and parts of giant statues, which must have fallen down in the earthquake. Fortunately they were covered with soil so they were not destroyed by the Knights of St. John. 66 statues and fragments were found, and these are now in the British Museum. They include parts of a great statue of a horse, lions, parts of the reliefs, and colossal statues of a man and woman. The statues look very lifelike and seem to represent real people. They show just how lavishly the tomb was decorated. Between 1966 and 1977 the Danish archaeologist Professor Christian Jeppersen uncovered the foundations of the mausoleum and explored the tomb chamber. He found that Mausolos had been buried with offerings for the dead, as was the custom in the area. 
the remains of sheep, calves, chickens, a goose, and eggs were found. Even as late as 1975, more parts of the reliefs were found nearby. Great Tombs The Great Pyramid of Khufu and the Mausoleum were two of the greatest tombs of the ancient world. But throughout history and up until our own times, other great tombs have been built. Like the Mausoleum, some were planned by rulers to keep their memories alive. In Roman times the Emperor Augustus was buried in a grand tomb on the Campus Martius which can still be seen near the Church of St. Roche in Rome. Others were built out of great love. One of the world's most beautiful tombs is the Taj Mahal in Agra in India. This was built between 1631 and 1653 by the Indian Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his wife. 